said mania is in full effect. Follow me, I'm gonna show you how I do this right here. My man 50 Cent. Hot. <laughs> Wankster. Hot. They say you a wankster, but you never stop, right? In the club. It's your birthday. He a bad boy, you know what I'm saying? He a bad boy. 50 Cent Mania is to rap what Beatlemania was to rock yeah. music back in the day, man. You feel a lot of pressure? <laughs> the G-Unit General has the number one album in the country with the bullet. 50 Cent has hit music. I told you I was getting hot. Reborn after getting shot, re-signed to Shady Records, remixed by M and Dre. I wish my first album was this hot. In the next half hour, we go behind the hype and into the head of 50 to find out about his loss. You were eight years old when your mother was murdered? What did they say? They told me your mother is not coming home. His love. Eminem and Dre is basically getting you women. Absolutely. And his legacy. People compare you to Tupac Shakur. That's a scary comparison. You know it, he knows it. All eyes are on 50 Cent. Yes, it's all eyes on me now, right? Yeah. Go, go. Go, 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 shorty, it's your birthday, we gon' party like it's your birthday, go, Miami, a full force promo tour in support of the debut album for 50 Cent, has every club from San Fran to South Beach mobbed with fans, and we're riding there in style, 50's level 4 bulletproof, bomb proof SUV, that's my truck right there, you see what I'm saying, I can't help but think 50 could have used this protection three years ago when 50 Cent Mania nearly didn't happen, when he was just an unknown rapper struggling to get out of the hood and almost never did. Were you scared for your life? I was scared the whole time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nobody gonna tell you that you're scared. It's a hit, man. You're supposed to die. Can you recall what it felt like, like when the Did bullets you entered your flesh? I mean, it burns. Yeah? Burns, burns, burns. Sometimes it happens so fast, you know, you can't move. Mm -hmm. You know, time to think. Yeah, they all time to do nothing. It's just the first reaction is to move, and mm -hmm. then the shots is going off. You had to rehabilitate, right? You yeah. Had to, how long did it take you to get where About you were? five months. Four or five months. Wow, that's a long process, and people don't think yeah. about, you think you get shot and jump back up and... Yeah. Go play hoop in the hood. You know again. what happened is I was walking, but on one of those things like this, but I couldn't put much pressure on that neither because my thumb, it came from my thumb and then came out my pinky. Now let me see your um the bullet wound in your mouth. Did you see? Oh, wow. It took the whole... The <laughs> line of the gun. It, and then where did that exit? It didn't. It's, it's still in there? Nah, it came out. And, th and that affects how you rap your, at all? Slightly. Uh -huh. my, my voice changed a little bit because of the air. So in a matter of basically three years, you've gone from literally fighting for your life on a gurney in a hospital with book full of bullet holes to being the hottest rapper in the business right now. I'm almost the hottest rapper. I signed well, you, a deal with the hottest you rapper. You signed a deal with the hottest rapper. <laughs> hey, M, you know you're my favorite white boy, right? Y'all know what time it is as soon as 50 signs on this dot. I had actually been in a slump like... Where is hip hop gonna go? And then when I heard 50 stuff, it was like, when I heard his new stuff, it was like, oh, okay. Him is the rapper's rapper. He listens to everything. Every word, every, every slang, if you change something, he's gonna hear it all. And him likes to build records around me. shoot those stones if you live in a glass house. And if you got a glass jaw, you should watch your mouth. As an artist, him uses so much of his life. It's visible. Like, you know who Kim is, you know who Haley is, you know how his relationship with his mother is, because he uses his life. And my music is similar to that on that note. Like, I use my life, but it's more a description of my neighborhood, my hood, you know, and that's what I wrote about. And he was able to see those qualities in me early. You know, that's what drew him to me. What about Dre? Dre, like, he'll play you know, beats, and then it's like he got these beats that you might charge you half of your budget for and then you have these beats <laughs> over here that, you know but the automatic that these these are the hits 50 so pick one of these and make a couple of singles or something do i think eminem and dr dre is responsible for a lot of my success i'm gonna say hell yeah <laughs>
Yeah. And what does Dre tell you? Can you share that with us? Well, he's, you know, try to tell me to stay focused. You know, because I told him in the beginning what I wanted, like my intentions weren't to just be trouble. Nobody wants to buy a problem. You know, and then with my background, there's a possibility that they could be purchasing the biggest problem that they found. The advance you got from Shady Aftermath, it was reported that it was a million dollar yeah. deal. I ended up with it. I mean, uh, now before Drain him, you were signed with Columbia Records, but you departed and went your separate ways. When, when I signed my deal with Columbia, it wasn't a great deal. I was left with $5,000. What'd you do with it? I bought crack with it. I much? sold crack during that whole, that whole time period. Would you? I had no option. How else would I provide for myself financially? Mm -hmm. And I just had my son. That was the reason why I started attempting to do music. I'm not trying to impress anybody with any of that. This is the situations that have just happened. These are the cards I've been dealt. You feel me? I actually wouldn't glorify you being, being gangster. That's nothing you're supposed to glorify. That's something that happens to you. You don't say, oh, I want to sell drugs. I would never sell drugs if I, wasn't feel, if I didn't feel like that was absolutely the only way for me to progress at that point. I had stopped selling drugs in order to rap. You got a record on your album. Is it Back Down? Yeah, back Down. Back Down, that's pretty much... Uh oh, yeah. to Ja Rule. Yeah. yeah. So, break down your beef with Ja Rule. It's obvious when you name your company Murder Inc., you would like to portray a certain image. His music does not coincide with the image that he would like to portray. I'm back in the game, Shawty, the ruling company, sing for the sound like the cookie monster. He'd like to be like 50 Cent. He'd like to speak about things that happen in the neighborhood that they won't accept from him because he hasn't lived anything like that. His life is nothing like that. I'm New York City zone, bad guy, bad guy. What are the possibilities of this ever just being squashed and maybe you guys doing a record for charity? Is that possible? Impossible. What's possible is that he can progress on, in his, on his own mm -hmm. while I progress doing what I do. It's, it's impossible for us to ever be friends. You date? Nah, I'm not dating. I'm focused. You know, you don't go out occasionally. Turn on your TV. We are here with the man 50 Cent. Go to the club. We in the club doing the same old two step. Hang out on any corner. And 50 Cent has got the phrase that pays. Since you were gangster. But you never stop, right? Hey, don't think that 50's explosion onto the pop scene affects his street credibility. He was born gangster. Go against me for show years a goner. And while 50 claims there's no glory in being gangster, his thug lyrics are a big reason he's on top of the game. Even though it's your truth, mm -hmm. a lot of the music you make and the things you rap about has a lot to do with violence mm -hmm. and murder. Yeah. Do you believe that by putting that energy out, that it might come back? To me? Yeah. I don't think so. It's what was my reality to this point. I think being creative, writing music, that those the things I'm writing to you are about my experiences. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's entertainment, but it's it's definitely my reality from the You were eight years old when your mother was murdered? Yeah. How did you find out? I mean, where were you? My grandmother and them told me. Yeah. What did they say? They told me your mother is not coming home. Mm -hmm. That she's not going to come back to pick you up. She's going to stay with us now. She was, like, into the streets, too, so she hustled. Mm -hmm. And... Like, so what, she, she sold drugs? Yeah, she okay. sold drugs. Okay. She used to be on 150th Street. That's what made it easier for me to get involved in selling drugs. Mm -hmm. Because I had all of the people that I had met young, they, they'd be like, oh, that's a British little boy. Mm -hmm. Well, all people who sold drugs. Mm -hmm. So it was like, you know, when I ended up, like, I was like 12. I was having a hard time in school. In high you know, school? Yeah. You can what high school did you go to? I went to Andrew Jackson. I got kicked out of Andrew Jackson High School. 
Well, what you do, look under the girl's skirt? Nah, so. I got arrested in Edgar Jackson High School. Like, at that point, mm -hmm. I was hustling, so I was hiding my pieces, my drawers from my mm -hmm. grandmother, mm -hmm. and I had it in a pair of uh, gym shoes, and I picked up the wrong gym shoe. <laughs> at our high school, we had metal detectors. So when we went through the metal detection at the high school, they found the pieces, mm -hmm. and they locked me up. I went through a whole few weeks out of school because they thought that I was selling drugs in the school. Mm -hmm. Were you? Yeah. Nah. Who did you hang out with in high school? Who, yeah, who was, your, who was the homies? Everybody was older than me. Mm -hmm. Like, I never really hung around people my age. They all, like, that's why I, I don't have a, a serious peer group now, because everybody that's my age, I was running with the older crew, so they all locked up or, you know, dead. I've been patiently waiting for a track this road on me. Now, when, when did you decide to become a rapper, though? I decided that when I had the opportunity. I, being honest, like, I always played with rapping. I played around, you know, man had turntables, we'd be in his basement, the instrumentals on the records, and we just all just rapped to him. But I didn't seriously consider being a rapper until I was in a conversation with Jam Master J. This the new era right here, check my man now, 56. Really, what year was that? That was in, I think, 97. That was only like five, six years ago. Yeah. Yeah? What Did did he teach you how to rap, or you just... Now, I knew how to rap, uh -huh. but I never had recorded a song. I didn't know song format, 16 bars. I didn't know how to count bars. Now, you know, the chorus, space, four bars, eight bar hooks, or however you're going to do it. They... I learned all of that from Jay, working with Jay. But he, he said that I had the right lyrics. To make it up, I do whatever it take. I love you like a fat kid love cake. But I know you got a song called 21 Questions. Yeah. And then you also got a song called Pimp. Yeah, I'm going to be right here. Yeah, on the album. And it seemed like those are directed towards, you know, women. Are you single right now? Yeah. You single? You date? Nah, I'm not dating. I'm focused. You're focused? Yeah. Bro, you're not going out, you know, you don't go out occasionally, you know. I don't really Are you out. celibate? <laughs> I don't go out. Nah, I ain't celibate. Can I be a valentine? Uh, you can be my valentine. So if uh, a woman came up to you right now and was like, man, I'm interested in you, I really want to, you know, you know, maybe move forward on something. It happens what you say? a lot now, though. Yeah? It's so, it so, happens so often now, it makes you feel awkward. So what kind I of... I feel like I got a facelift. Yeah. <laughs> you feel like you got a facelift? Yeah. You they treat me so much better now. You think it's like, oh, he's the kind of dude with Eminem. Yes. So M Trey. Eminem and Dre is basically getting you women. Absolutely. What would you do on a date, man? What would 50 Cent take a girl It'd out It'd be of hard. Now I need to just... Let me come watch your TV. Let me watch your TV. Okay. Like, I, I'm not necessarily, I don't necessarily like to go out too much. Mm -hmm. So you keep, in, you, you keep it indoors? Yeah, my own body. Okay. You're single, so you and the, your son's mother are obviously not together, do yeah. you? But we cool, though. We down for life. Yeah. So, you know, who, anybody who I would kick it with, I have to accept that. They gotta accept the baby mama and the baby. Yeah. Okay, and there's no baby mama drama. Ah, uh, no. None of that. Nah. Okay. My baby mother, she's special. You don't have a song really where you kind of dedicated to your mm -hmm. son on your album. Um, is there a reason why? I don't think people are interested in hearing that from me at this point. Mm -hmm. I think it's been, I've been, I'm more popular for trouble. Than it is. I don't think they want to hear my personal business right now. What made you decide to put him in the video, though, the Wankster video? I want to show him different things. Like, right now, he thinks he's Romeo. Oh, Bow Wow, one of them. Oh, yeah. he thinks he's Romeo Yeah, he Bow thinks he's a star. Oh, he's rapping. He said, yo, my video is coming on. Does he ask you, Daddy, why did you get shot? I mean, nah, he never asked questions. Like he never asked you that? You know, I think he understands it, but he just... I mean, that's not a regular experience for kids. Yeah, that's not a regular experience. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yes. so he's gonna For be, anybody, yeah. It's going to be affected by the way my life is anyway. Is there anything that you fear? If you haven't figured it out yet, 
50 Cent Mania is real. The man behind it is real. Yo, 50 is strictly for the streets. If you ain't gangster enough, then you can't understand the movement. Bam! What up, homie? But what's his real motivation in life? 50 Cent is a man driven by many things. From God. Gotta be something. Gotta believe in a higher power. To money. Give us bling, bling, much bling, laugh. To fear. Ain't nobody gonna tell you that he's good. In this motivated approach to the game, there's only one reason why 50 Cent is already being compared to a rap legend. You know, because of a lot of the things you've gone through um, in your life, in terms of, you know, let's be frank, this kind of a dysfunctional family situation, being shot, you know, now having the heart of the street on your side, you know, and you're always in media now. Uh, people compare you to Tupac Shakur. That's, that's a scary comparison. Because Tupac is a legend. I'm just a new boy. I'm a new kid. It's a lot of similarities in the way he lived and the way you live. Now, you have a song um, called Many, Many, Many Men. You know, or you that's say, my favorite, you allude to the fact that Pac got shot in the feds, never figured out who it was. Um, you, you say things like, I don't cry no more, I don't look to the sky no more. But, you know, that, do you feel that way sometimes, that, you know, your life might come to a sudden halt, a sudden halt or somebody might try to kill you? Well, I know that, you know, death is promised. When you get in life-threatening situations, I think that might have been why Tupac started writing like that so much. After he'd been shot up. You know, you find yourself in life-threatening situations, you kind of got to deal with that mentally. That, you know, if you're not in control of it, and death is promise, he who fears death is in denial. You got a song called, um, If I Could Make It To Heaven? Yeah. You, know. you got to make it to heaven for going to hell. So you believe in the heaven in the, in the hell? Yeah. You always wearing crosses. So are you a religious dude? Yeah, like I believe in God. Which religion do you follow? I don't go to church. My my mother raised us Baptist. Right. Raised you Baptist. I I thought I, I could see you going to church every Sunday, man. Nah, <laughs> I, don't, I don't do that. Mama said everything happened to us was part of God's plan. So at night when I talk to him, I got my gun in my hand. But is there any moral conflict? You know, like if you work at the cross, it is, but you live by the gun. You don't have an option. My lifestyle hasn't coincided with what I was raised to believe mm -hmm. all my life. You know, I've like like been to the pearly gates that sent me back. Just before you fall asleep and you think about how much transition your life has taken, what do you think? I'm excited. Mm -hmm. I feel blessed. I feel like I'm here for a reason. You know, I, I think it's to do something positive, you know, but I think anything that changes too fast is no good. So you shouldn't expect me to come in next week or walk around with a Bible. Or... The title of the album is Get Rich or Die Trying. Now, a lot of people read that title and think, oh, man, there he goes again, man, talking about death and money. Can you explain that? It may feel like a negative statement coming from me, Get Rich or Die Trying. But if your average working class person says, that they're gonna get rich or die trying, it means that they have that they have focus. You have a very, very colorful life. <laughs> Past and present. And you, you pretty you pretty much have a it seemed like a positive take on all of it. You, but you're still a man, you know. But you're still mortal. Is there anything that you fear? I fear. I fear not fitting in with Eminem and Dr. Dre. That's my pressure. Nothing else counts to me right now. One of his first songs was Hi, my name is, and then look at the sales. So don't put that kind of pressure on me. You know what I mean? It's no pressure. <laughs> Nobody likes me. With all the bulletproof vests and the guns and the cop chase, you know, coming down on you is the only thing you fear right now. Because Eminem and Dr. Ray. Absolutely. Okay. That's what counts to me. That other stuff has already been a part of my life. Okay. None of that is new. All right. And at this moment in your life, are you are you happy? Absolutely. 
hundred percent. Yeah, man, I'll show you my teeth so much, you get tired. You be like, man, is that anything they said about him true? Mm -hmm. Cause he out there showing his teeth like he's, he's happy. <laughs>